Hello, and welcome to another episode in our series on getting started with the Java Client Library for the Google Ads API. I'm Matteo Tomazone, and as you know if you followed the other videos in the series, I'm a developer relations engineer working on the Google Ads API. So, first of all, let's do a recap of the steps that we've taken so far. In the previous videos, we created an empty Java project where we imported the client library for the Google Ads API. And then we also generated all the credentials that we need. So now it's time to combine these two ingredients together so that our project can use the credentials we generated to authenticate to the Google Ads API. There are a couple of different ways that we can use to configure our credentials for usage in a Java project. The first one we will see is to store them in an ads.properties file in the home directory of your machine. As you can see here, I already have a file named ads.properties in my home directory, and inside it, I can put all the credentials needed for my project, like the developer token, the OAuth client ID and client secret, and a refresh token. Note that you should store a refresh token in the ads.properties file if you plan on authenticating against the Google Ads API with only a single Google account, like for instance when you're developing on your machine. If your application needs to authenticate several different users against several different Google Ads accounts, you will likely store the refresh tokens associated with each of these accounts in a place like a database and use the right refresh token according to the Google Ads account you want to authenticate to. In case you are using the OAuth service account flow, you can still put the required credentials in the ads.properties file. As you can see, you can configure the path to the secrets JSON file and the email address of the user you want your application to impersonate. I have them commented out because I'm not using the OAuth service account flow here. Finally, the last configuration property you can see here is the login customer ID that defines the Google Ads Manager account that you want to use to manage the customer accounts from your application. As we said, using the ads.properties file is the option we suggest to configure your Java projects when developing on your machine. However, there may be cases where you don't want to have a file in your home directory, or maybe you don't even have access to the home directory of the machine, such as when your application is deployed in a cloud environment, for instance. In cases like these, you can still configure your Java application using environment variables. As you can see here, the Java client library for the Google Ads API allows you to use environment variables to configure the same set of credentials that we have just seen in the ads.properties file the developer token, the OAuth client ID and client secret, the refresh token, but also the path to the secrets JSON file and the email address for service accounts, and of course, the login customer ID. You can also work with environment variables on your development machine. You can configure them at the system level, or you can set them in the run configuration of your project, which is what we will do together now. In my IntelliJ IDEA window, I can click on the drop-down with the run configurations and then on Edit Configurations to edit the existing configuration that I created when I first executed my project in the previous video. Here, I can add the environment variables I need. By clicking on the button next to the environment variables field, I can see the ones that are already configured at the system level and add my own, specific for this project. For instance, I can add the api.googleads.developer-token variable and set my developer token as its value. And now, when I run my project from inside my IDE, it will have the value of my developer token in the environment variable. That's all for this video. We're almost at the finish line. The last step we need to take in the next video will be to execute one of the code examples we provide with the Java client library to make sure that everything is configured correctly. After that, you will be ready to start working on your own application on top of the Google Ads API. I'll see you there.